Mexico City. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has touched down there for the North American Leaders Summit. He and his wife Sophie were greeted by President Andreas Manuel Lopez Obrador and Mexico's First Lady. U.S. President Joe Biden arrived earlier. Next hour, the three leaders sit down for a private dinner. Tomorrow is when the formal talks begin on everything from the economy and trade to climate change and drug cartels. So let's talk about what is on top of what is top of mind, I should say, for the three leaders as they meet in Mexico City. Augustin Barrios Gomez is a former federal congressman and diplomat from Mexico. And Bruce Heyman is the former U.S. ambassador to Canada. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. I want to talk, uh, talk to start a bit about the state of these relationships. And I'll start with you, Bruce Heyman. Uh, we know there have been some highs and lows in recent years. What would you describe as, uh, let's call it the vibe, the level of like-mindedness heading into this meeting? So uh, in the U.S.-Canada relationship, it's very strong right now. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, while we have some differences on some trade items, for the most part, I would tell you that it, it's been about as good as it's been since the Obama administration, clearly. Yeah. With regard mm -hmm. to Mexico, I'm so glad to see this opportunity to sit down and address, maybe in private, which is the right place to do it, address some of the trade issues that we're facing, migration issues, and drug enforcement issues that we're facing more with Mexico. I don't think that applies as much to Canada, but Canada is not immune from these things. Augustine, I'd like to bring you in there and ask, like, is Canada, sure. I hesitate to say like a bit of a sideshow, but given what Bruce Heyman is just saying, given what I'm seeing, you know, some of the coverage from international agencies barely mentions that Canada is there. How significant a role do you expect our country to have at this discussion? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I would start by saying that the that there are two uninvited countries that are very much um, surrounding the agenda in this particular North American Leadership Summit, at summit or Three Amigos Summit, as, the, as some call it, um, and those are Russia and China. And I think in, in that sense, the, the United States has to look to Canada very much in the geopolitical sense as a part of NATO and all of these different things, um, where that conversation is very relevant. And when it looks to Mexico, it has to deal with other issues and particularly this concept of nearshoring and all of these different things. Mexico, at the end of the day, has an economy that's 130 million people. There are 37 million Mexicans and Mexican-Americans in the United States. The level of, of integration between, between Mexico and Canada is, is, is really uh, not seen anywhere else. And so the issues that they have to deal with, that these two countries have to deal with, are, are huge and loom large. The issues that 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 the U.S. and Mexico have to deal with Canada in terms of strategic interests, in terms of geopolitics, are also very very large, but they're not as defined as the as the issues on the uh, on the southern border. Uh, Bruce Heyman, let's pick up on that idea, particularly of China, because that is certainly coming up in a lot of the agenda setting, a lot of the coverage. The idea that all three countries will be working to lessen their reliance on China. How much progress on something like that actually gets made at a meeting like this? So I, everything's incremental in these meetings. When diplomats get together, we, we move in inches. We don't necessarily move in miles. Uh, but the path forward is really important here. And what is incredibly important is that the leaders are all together having this discussion and understand each other on a personal level. Everybody should know that this all existed, this three partnership get together started with George W. Bush in 2005 in the Security and Prosperity Partnership and then moved to the North American Leaders Summit and happened all the way through until the Trump administration when it didn't happen in 2017, 18, 19 or 20. So it was reignited by President Biden last year and I'm glad to see it's in Mexico. Look, we have to sit down at the table as world leaders in this region to tackle the things that are important to us. And I think, uh, you know, we would just discuss uh, the world on a geopolitical basis and the challenges from Russia and China. Um, but we have some near term issues facing us uh, with the three countries that need to be addressed as well.
Okay, well, let's talk, Mr. Barrios uh, uh, Gomez, about one of those issues in particular. We know going into this, there has been a lot of attention about the idea that Canada and the United States might sort of try to push Mexico a bit on energy policy, limiting foreign investors. How does a conversation like that go in the room? Obviously, uh, the Mexican president has a domestic agenda that he needs to pursue. How, how much pushing and prodding uh, from outside countries uh, is likely to have an effect? Right. I, this is a very difficult issue because uh, President Lopez Obrador is also getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, feedback, a lot of heat from the business community in Mexico, which basically is saying, you know, do what you want, but uh, but energy is key for nearshoring. Energy is key for growth, and if you want to have a source of wealth for Mexicans, you really are going to have to uh, have to let this one go, kind of thing. And and you have to understand, uh, Lopez Obrador comes from a uh, an energy nationalist position. Mm where they love this idea where everything comes from the state everything is very petro oriented right it's very uh it's very uh, hydrocarbon oriented that's the way they were brought up that's kind of their 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 shibboleth so to speak and it's been very very difficult to move them to the center on this but you'll notice that the white house actually today uh was very pointed in saying that energy issues have not been resolved in mexico and in fact um, there, there are ongoing efforts um, to negotiate to make sure that Mexico does actually meet its obligations under, under the new NAFTA, right, under the USMCA. Uh, Bruce Heyman, I want to ask you about another energy issue, but one of a bit of a, a different kind, the Inflation Reduction Act, right? Mega billions invested in the clean tech sector. Um, yeah. I've talked to officials here in Canada, some who are wringing their hands about this, some who say, hey, great investment in clean technology. What do you think Canada needs to be do, doing right now, though, um, or, or what conversations might even be happening in these meetings to ensure that the United States doesn't just essentially suck up all the money uh, there is to be invested in clean technology right now? I think Canada needs to make it attractive for manufacturers of auto-related electric vehicles, whether it's battery technology, assembly, manufacturing, needs to continue to make it very attractive to do business in Canada. I think it serves North America well uh, for Canada to be part of that manufacturing, as it does for Mexico. And we all need to be on the playing field together. I think the provisions that caused everybody the largest concern were the electric vehicle tax credits, and that was dealt with. That's dealt with, yeah. This, uh, you know, in this provision. So I think, like everything else, once the laws have been set, that the countries need to make it incredibly attractive for businesses to do business. And I think that's Canada's opportunity set here. Okay. Bruce Heyman, I, I can't let uh, the two of you go without asking you about the question that I know diplomats on both sides of our border are frankly <laughs> maybe getting a little bit tired of. Uh, but a lot of folks look at a visit from President Biden as a barometer of the Canada-U.S. relationship a real life one, not a virtual one, hasn't happened yet. Do you think it is important that that announcement come out of this meeting, that Joe Biden's going to come visit Canada? Well, I don't know if it comes out of this meeting, and I don't like putting timelines and deadlines on the president but, of the United States. But I'm asking States. how significant you but, think it is. Yeah, sorry, sir. Look, it's, it, it, it's important, but let's, let's be realistic about this. He was there in the last days of uh, the Obama administration, a state dinner hosted. He hosted the first virtual bilateral meeting when we were in the midst of COVID with the prime minister. And so I don't want to make this bigger than what some people may be making in Canada today. But yes, I would love to see it as a supporter of Joe Biden and a lover of the Canada-U.S. relationship. I'd love to see it happen. And I'd love to see it happen sooner rather than later. Okay, it's certainly something we're going to watch for. Thank you both so much for your perspective today. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you very much, Kathy. That's Augustin Barrios Gomez, a former federal congressman and diplomat from Mexico and former U.S. ambassador to Canada, Bruce Heyman.